Now, it was a little uh, rare that we see this, but you saw it said they believe Jones wasn't intentionally cheating. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, again, it is what it is, you know, but uh, here's the deal. When it comes to USADA, they can't come to my house anymore at 6 a.m. I mean, what's the point? They've been to my house 15 times enough. USADA, don't come to my house anymore. You don't need to. You don't need to come. I'm not going to fail a test. I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm not going to have to sit up there and go, I'm serious this time, guys. I promise I wasn't really trying to cheat. It's never going to happen with me. 70 times, 70 times since I started wrestling internationally, and I have never made a mistake. It's not that hard. So to even be having to sit here and do this again shows that, you know, you guys are ridiculous. You took this fight on six days' notice. Take us back to the call when they hit, they hit you up. Uh, man, you know, the UFC knows the call. Every time something drops out, that light heavyweight, midweight, middleweight division, they, uh, I hope they get on to the like, I'll fight who. And, uh, you know, this time they gave me calls, so they know I'm about that life. So. Any concern, Eric, that this is a five-round fight, and do you think it's even going to go five rounds? Uh, this fight definitely not going five rounds. Everybody knows his style, my style. Uh, everybody I fight, they always back up. Like, I like to chase him around for a little bit. I don't think he's going to do that. I think we're going to beat him in the middle and, uh, you know, slug it out for a little bit. After that impressive knockout in your last fight, you beat a Tiago Santos. What does this do for you uh, in terms of where you go next? Um, man, you know, I'm definitely willing to fight at both weight classes, uh, middleweight and light heavyweight. I, don't, I think my career is better suited at uh, middleweight, so I don't know. Uh, he's the number 12 middleweight, so I don't know if this is going to, like, move me up uh, in the middleweight division or not. But, you know, uh, I think the, you know, the fans, are, uh, you know, appreciate me doing this. The UFC appreciates me doing this. So, you know, it's giving me a little status and a little clout uh, in the division, I think. For Valentina, her next fight is going to be for the UFC Women's Flyweight Championship. And it seems like maybe Ioana Jacek will be that fighter. You know, I think maybe the holdup, and this is just me speculating, is that Jacek is happy, so happy with the way her last cut went down to 116 mm -hmm. pounds that she still has those reservations to leave strawweight. I know you have other fighters out there, Sajara Eubanks and Jessica I and others, uh, Caitlin Chukagian, who are at or near the top. Some of them have fights on the books, but they all want a piece of that belt. Um, Shevchenko's getting that title shot, and I, I think it's probably going to be Joanna if they can find a way to entice her. What do you think? I, I think that's the fight they should make. Uh, obviously, these women have a history together. They've competed in Muay Thai and kickboxing uh, in the past. And I think for Ioana, she could absolutely make 125 pounds and still be strong in that weight class, in my opinion. I think she's a little bit taller than a lot of the women at 115 pounds. And the biggest hurdle, the biggest issue is that Rose Namajunas is the champion in that weight class, and she has two wins over Ioana. So it, it right. might be a while uh, if Rose stays the champion, of course, uh, before she ever gets that third fight. If, she, if right. she ever does. So I think it does make sense for her to try her hand at fighting at 125 pounds. And I think this is simply the biggest fight you can make at 125 pounds. So um, I, I think really it's to the benefit of the UFC, Shevchenko, and Ioana young Jacek. That's a huge fight. And who knows if Rose Namajunas is even going to fight again in 2018, right? She might be out until the first quarter of 2019. Mm -hmm. and, and there is one Jessica Andrade lurking as well. So right. we'll see how, how that all shakes out. this the biggest fight in the history of women's mixed martial arts? Uh, I think it's going to be a great fight because there are going to be two, t two champions that are going to fight each other. And I, I hope, I think yeah, I want to have a good style and if we make the good fight, good fight. Both come to the fight. I think it'll be an exciting fight for the fans. Chris, let's talk about Amanda's style. What do you think is the best part of her game? Where is she dangerous? Um, I, think, I think she's like to put pressure Mm -hmm. you know, in the, her opponent, but she didn't like pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see her couple fights, like the first her lost against Katsugano, like you can see this fight, she put pressure Katsugano, Katsugano continue, you know, pressure back, and you know, she has quit herself this fight. And everybody knows that I'm the pressure. I'm going to do the pressure, you know, I, I don't quit. 
I have to make me sleep for me to stop. You know, <laughs> this is my job. And, and it, because this, I think it's going to be a great fight. Chris, two Brazilian champions here. Who does Brazil root for? Who are they cheering for? You know, this is the one thing I would, I, I, people ask me, I want to fight Amanda. You know, I don't want to fight Amanda. You know, it's, I say because we, the same champion, I have mm -hmm. a dream, like, to have a girls, women's fight for, be the champion of see all the Brazilian. Imagine, mm -hmm. it's a house mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Same happened with the guys before, going to happen to the girls. And, but you know, she called me out, she say, I don't think she's care about because I saw she's in one fight, Jessica Andrade, and she's coach other girl, like stand up and coach mm -hmm. other girl against Jessica and even on teammate. And after she's calling me out, I say, man, you know, I think it doesn't care. Let's fight, let's do this fight. And I think the fans want to see it and why to make this fight happen. A lot of TJ Dillashaw name being thrown out there. Give us, give us the update. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe he wants to fight me from what he's uh, from what he has said to the media. Uh, I want to fight him. The UFC wants to fight. Now it's just time to negotiate and to see what weight class we're going to do it at. Like I, I gave him the option either 25 or 35. It doesn't, it doesn't matter for me. I want to super fight. I'll, I'll, at 25, I'll knock him out. So if he wants to come down, you're going to get knocked out at 125 pounds. 35, 35, I'm taking a little risk, but I, I still believe I could beat him. When do you want to see it happen? Do you have, a, you have a timeline yet that makes sense for you? Yeah, sometime in December. Sometime maybe the end of the year, if possible, or uh, Canada, or January, February. I, th I think sometime towards like those those dates. One can make the argument that DJ deserves an immediate rematch on account of what, what he's accomplished in the UFC. Absolutely, does, does Demetrius Johnson deserves the rematch. When it comes to what he's done, absolutely. But I, I know Demetrius is also hurt. He's still recovered from his injuries. If I don't fight TJ, I want DJ next. But the, the reason why I want to fight TJ was just because it's a super fight. Because I'm saying, I'll go up or you come down, but we can fight. It's not about a, a year of, of talking, a year and a half of talking that such and such is going to happen. I'm saying, let's let's score down now. I, I felt like they had overlooked me in my fight against Demetrius. And they're always trying to get the super fight with TJ and, and DJ. And I'm just like, you know what? I won. Give me the fight. I, I feel like it's deserving. Demetrius Johnson can heal up and, and, and I'll fight him next. Do you agree with the UFC's decision to strip her, Nico Montano? I do and, and I don't, but it was, uh, you know, like I said, job is a job. Be 100% in and take care of your business. I paid the ultimate price last year, but I would do this the same because there is more important than the money and, and popularity. It's an honor and that's the point. If you move up once, would you want to stay at 125 or do you still have aspirations to come back down? Come back down. To 115. I will go back down. Well, if I will fight, if I will fight in 125, because I'm still thinking about, like, there's so many things going on, we will see. We will see. That if I will move up, the point is that I will have to stay in the strawweight ranking. I'm the number one. I know that, I believe that Jessica Andrash will face Rosna Mayunas, the champion, and I want to face the next one. Even if you go up? Even if I go up. So even if you win the belt, you're, you're still going to plan on going back down? Of course. Hmm. I have my dreams and I have a job to do.